Hi everyone. Well, it's nice to be back with everyone. Um, if you're new, welcome. If you're old, welcome back. Um, I wanted to show um, a little tutorial today. Uh, I was working on some little projects, um, some little booklets, and I wanted to add uh, a dangly wax seal on the bottom. So you've probably seen something similar. Um, but I've added uh, a little domed back to this, which I thought made a really nice kind of finishing touch. It's nice and glossy and swirly. And um, they're quite small and delicate, as you can see. So I'm going to show you how to make those. Um, I wanted to start actually with a little disclaimer. Um, I've got some plasticine here and uh, I'm going to show you this again properly but I just thought while I was rambling you may as well just watch me do something useful uh, I'm trying not to get my right hand in the way this uh, I'm not used to doing tutorials and I think by the end of this video you'll probably all agree that uh, my time might be spent <laughs> more productively differently. <laughs> this might be the worst tutorial it, it, on YouTube. Um, at the end of it so well, let's see how it goes. Um, I don't think TikTok's going to be offering me any jobs anytime soon. Um, so here's my disclaimer. Um, I don't know whether plasticine is actually the best thing to use for this, but that's what I'm using. Um, from a safety point of view, um, I did wonder and I did look on YouTube to see, um, sorry, not YouTube, I googled, um, you know, can you heat plasticine? And I couldn't find anything that would indicate it was uh, unsafe or dangerous. Uh, the other point being, you're not really heating it, but um, it's just touching the hot wax for a few seconds and the wax cools down pretty quickly. Um, so you may feel like you want to use something else. You know, um, I think as a crafter, if you have um, uh, an idea, um, if you're like me, you want to try it out really quickly. So... Um, my mind just went to plasticine and I thought, well, I'll try it. Uh, many years ago, when my dad was still working, he was a jeweller. Um, they used to use plasticine for moulds. So I think that's probably why my mind went there um, to start with. That was my first thought. I need a mould. Let's try some plasticine, see if that works. Um, I'm holding this here for a minute because um, it doesn't cool down as quickly as it does when we, you know, stamp onto a, a cold surface, usually onto a, a paper or a table or whatever. Um, so there is some movement in the wax for quite a few seconds afterwards. And because I want it to um, dry in a sort of nice smooth shape um, I do j just generally tend to wait with it on my finger for a bit and then I'll just put it down on the desk and sometimes if the string wants to kind of push it up I'll just weight it down with some with whatever not on on the wax but on the string I mean Okay, so 
Yeah, so after thinking about it, I was wondering whether um, a silicon mould might be better. Because you can get uh, quite a few um, different... You know, they make them for baking and sweeties and and um, jewellery making and all sorts now. Little silicon moulds that you can get in thousands of different shapes and sizes. So I haven't really had time to look properly and personally I'm happy using plasticine. It works um, for what I need it to do but maybe you want to play further or you feel safer. Um, so you could go ahead and, and try that. Um, so I'm making, I've just got a piece of doweling. I'm making a little dent which is about maybe a quarter of an inch, about four mils or something like that. And I've got some string with a bead on it already. Um, my string is it's about 13 inches. Um, I don't think I need that much really, but if I'm showing you how to um, tie a, a special little knot, it's going to be easier to see if the string is a bit longer. Okay. Um, so I've got these lovely ceramic beads as well, which I really love. Um, they've got nice rustic colours and they've got a bit of kind of tonal around the um, edges as well, nice earthy colours. So I'm using those for the um, the woodland, well not woodland but one of the booklets I made is like an ocean theme and one is like a not ocean theme so it's more greens and browns so I wanted a bit more rustic for this one so that's why I'm using the twine. And that kind of a bead as well. You don't have to entirely fill the hole. In fact, it's better if you don't entirely fill the hole. Then you don't get as much leaking. Okay, where am I? All right. So here's my seal. I'm just adding a bit of um, wax to my pot just to get going. Okay, so in a moment I'll show you how to do the knot as well. Um, so obviously it's quite flat now, but you'll notice I've got a little bit of... Um, I can't tell from where I'm sitting if that's focusing properly. It's just at a funny angle. I hope so. So you can just see some of the wax has squidged up over the, the brim. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, obviously it's not essential. And depending what you're doing... I'm sorry, bring that into camera. Um, depending on what you're doing, what your finished project is, you may want to do it differently, and that's fine. Um, I just wanted a particular look, so that's why I sort of developed this method to get the result that I wanted. Okay, so um, if you have a seal with a frame around the picture, as you can see, you can just just sort of touching the um, edge of the spoon. You can reduce it down to that frame, and the 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 reason that the frame is handy is that because you can see that you've still got a nice circle shape. Oh, uh, can you see that? Um, and that, that kind of serves as a little guide for you. 
after I've done that, I'm going to just use my finger and I'm, I'm holding both sides of the string up out of the way. And I'm using my finger just to dip kind of as far as I can, but without the wax coming right up over the top. Skim it onto the side without actually touching the side and then turn it over quickly and let it dry that way up so that um, as the wax moves around, which it will quite a lot, it's kind of dripping evenly, um, kind of expanding into a, a nice dome shape. So I'm going to hold that for a moment. Um, okay, so the um, the mould you can use a few times before it gets out of shape, so you don't have to roll it every time. So I'll just do one more with the other side, the bigger side. In fact, do you know what? I'm not going to do that because the video is just taking so long. <laughs> Um, what I will show you is that I just dip the ends in. So this is one from before. And I'm going to um, oh, Sorry, that's turning into the worst video on YouTube. I'm going to cut the ends where I want them slightly unevenly and then I'm just going to dip the very end just the last two mils and as it dries make sure that you're holding it upright so that again um, you get a nice drip you get a nice drip shape as it dries um, and not a kind of untidy glob. So that's that. Um, so that's how I finish those. And also I want to put a knot. And I'll show you how I do my knot. Okay, so I'm holding it upside down at the moment. So I want to get my loop and I want to just twist it into a smaller little loop there. And then I'm going to push it back like that. And this one, which is at the front, goes round the back and through the loop. So you're pulling it the whole thing through the seal and also the bead. So you have that, and then I'm going to do it once more the same, all the way through, and pull the seal and the bead through. Okay, and once you've got that, then I start just snugging it up. And don't be tempted to pull it too quickly, because it's a funny kind of knot, and it, you just need to feed it um, gradually. Okay, um, so this loop, so you've got two big loops, one of them is getting smaller as you gradually feed it back. So you want it as close to the bead as you can. Um, right, as it snugs up, Watch what happens to this loop here as I expand this one. Can you see it kind of flips over? And so you want to leave that. You want to encourage that to stay there. So you can hold that with your thumb while you carry on tightening up the rest of the knot. So again, just do it gradually. It will get 
a bit untidy and difficult. So don't be tempted just to try and pull it. Um, if you do end up in a mess, it's not one of those permanent knots. You can just kind of pull at it and do it again. Unravel it and do it again. So that's fine. Okay. Um, now I did try and do this tutorial with different string because it wasn't very clear what I'm doing. Um, once it's in your hand and you're doing it, you'll be able to see it better. But um, right now, I just have to take my word for it. What it ends up with is um, a little collar on your loop. And it, it means that the, the loop itself stays um, nice and straight. Um, so with my needle, so you've you've actually got a collar on that side or a wrap one on that side and one bigger one in the middle um, and so they work quite well I uh, don't know if I've got one but that one actually might be a bit clearer to see I don't know but anyway once it's in your hand I think you'll understand but you don't really need to see the knot it's just what the knot achieves and it helps your string to lie flat. Um, so we've got, once you've done that and you've dipped the ends, um, and you're happy with your nice domed bottom. And I don't know if I mentioned that um, while it's drying, don't be tempted to touch it, the dome, because um, you get a nice gloss on them if you leave them alone. So there's that. Um, speaking of gloss, um, I just wanted to mention the old-fashioned sealing wax. Uh, oh, my battery saver's just come on, so I hope it doesn't go dark. Um, so th it, this is really nice stuff. It's quite expensive, um, so I wouldn't use it all the time. Um, but if you had a special like, friend that you're writing to or something, it, it would be really nice to use. Um, if I hold that up to the light, I can I can see through it. It's kind of got a really lovely translucent uh, quality. It's like a hard boiled sweet. Really nice, but it is very brittle, so it's not going to lend itself well, I think, to some craft projects. Um, so for crafting purposes, um, you know what we use is fine. We've got the the sticks. Have to say, if you're new to crafting. Just go with the beads. Beads are much easier to use and to mix your colours and everything. These, I think, are a bit awkward with the um, the wick. And if you haven't seen these, these are really nice. Um, these are like transparent, looks like, um, almost like honey. Uh, I just did a couple to show you here. Um so you can see the string through that one. I'll probably need to colour in the um, the botanical a little bit to sh make it show up. But isn't that lovely? It looks like a sweetie. This one was the same. I mixed in just a tiny little drop of dark brown and swirled it a bit. It's like crystallised amber. Really, really nice. Um, so I thought that would be really pretty for um, oops, a bee journal if you were doing something like that. Um, this was a similar idea. I've just cut the string off the bottom. Um, I didn't really like this string, so I was just playing around to start with. But for the right project, I think, uh, without the dangles at the bottom, the legs coming out, I think that's really cool. Maybe a little bit more... Oh, I don't know. I was going to say office -y, but I don't know. Maybe that's just the colour is making me think that. Um, so we've got those. The ocean ones I did with um, a different string because I wanted a stiffer. Um, they're a bit more small and delicate. But I didn't want them too floppy um, or rustic. So I've just gone with the waxed thread for those. I think that's all I wanted to show. Oh yeah, one more. Um, 
that one is a slightly different effect again. I used a leather punch for that one. Similar size to the the wax seal there. Um, maybe even more of a rustic effect because I haven't gone around the edges of that one. So it's a bit more squidgy. But I think for the right project, that's quite cool. Um, right, I think I'm going to leave it there. I'll show Okay, well, my battery did die in the end, so um, I'm just refilming the last bit later in the day. So if things look weird and different, that's why. Um, so I just wanted to make a little request before I close that um, if you do see uh, ideas that you'd like to use on my channel, um, then if you could please give credit, that would be really awesome. Um, leave a link to my channel if you can um, but if you're if you're selling things or um, showing things on Instagram on YouTube or anything like that then um, uh, please do that that would be really lovely and um, it just remains for me to say goodbye and um, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you soon guys take care bye